and welcome to Real Taxi, the show where me, Real Taxi driver and stand-up comedian Trevor Bickles, meet some friends, picks them up in the back of the cab, and we have a bit of a laugh. Now, this is the first ever episode, so I'm really, really excited for about this. Um, since it's the first episode, though, I'm going to give you a little bit of a run-through on how, it, how we work. So, firstly, we're going to have a bit of a chat with a guest, get to know them a bit, and have a bit of a laugh, followed by a cheeky little quiz I'm sure you'll enjoy, and finished off with a question I love to ask all stand-up comedians. Tell us about your worst or craziest gig experience. Now, this has been a bit of a long time in the making, this show, so I'm not going to hang around anymore. I'm going to get straight into it and interview my first ever guest. This guy is fantastic. Not only does he have over 22,000 followers on Instagram, he's got his own podcast and show on the net. He's the winner of the Natties 2020 and is actually a damn nice bloke and a good friend of mine on the circuit. I'm going to introduce him now, the wonderful Ali Woods. All right, Trevor, I've never been more insulted in all my life. Thank you so it's so much. It's so nice. What a nice intro. Appreciate that. You know what people <laughs> say nice things about you and you're like, now nah, this guy hasn't seen me on a night out. <laughs> <That's> stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, Ali's, paid, Ali's actually paid me to say all of that, just to let you know. <laughs> yeah. um, so welcome to the cab. You're the first ever guest. Tell us what you think, mate. What do you, what do you reckon? Oh, brilliant. It's a pleasure to be here. Firstly, I do, and genuinely, Trevor, I will write back at you. Good friend of mine as well from the circuit. Uh, got add in from the circuit, not in real life, obviously. But no, no, but, we, don't, we don't talk in real life. Like that. <laughs> but colleagues, colleagues. But <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's it's great to be here and, and hanging out. And the cab itself, I I haven't been in a cab in ages because of COVID and all this stuff. So it's just interesting being back here and feeling like this is real life. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, how do you think? I thought I've not driven the cab now, crikey, since what December. So this is even a little bit alien for me, if I'm honest with you. Uh, so what have you been up to? Obviously, we've, we've been in lockdown, right? No one's been doing sod all, right? What have you been doing in the little time, sorry, in the time that we've had? Yeah, well, it's been weird. I mean, we were chatting about this on the, on, on the, way, on the way together. Mm. But, um, like, between breakdowns, it's been, <laughs> it's been good. <laughs> it's, been good uh, it's been good to do more online stuff. Um, yeah. You know, as you said... Uh, yeah, I mean, I got twenty thousand Instagram followers. Whatever, man. You know, just get over it. Stop mentioning it. But, but the, <laughs> he, he doesn't talk about it a lot. I don't like to talk about it. As I'm... soon as he got in the car and I picked him up from the station, he was like, "Have you seen them? Any followers I've got? <laughs> Have you seen it, Trevor? I had a little. You've fucking... got six hundred, Trevor, on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. I was like, "Oh, Ali, get in." <laughs> you know I, mean? I sent him a voice note. Then I reiterated when I got in. Um, yes, um... he's got yeah. business cards as well written. I didn't tell you that. He's got business cards saying Ali Woods, twenty two thousand. Follows Instagram. Just saying. <laughs> I just give them the strangers. They're like, "What is this?" <laughs> I just remember that. Just remember that. Um, yeah, mate. To be honest, like, well, I'll tell you what. We'll go through the lockdown. So, go on. obviously, we had that. When you talk about the natties, I will tell viewers of this. Viewers of this, you probably know who Trevor is anyway. But if you've never seen him live, he's bloody brilliant. And he went and smashed it at this big competition at Hackney Empire yeah, on the February, midway through February. How lucky we got that in before, <laughs> before literally COVID. It was about a, about a month, even yeah, less than was, that. I, about I three it weeks. Fifteenth of Feb. I've got. I remember, remember in my head. So yeah, it must have been maybe three weeks, three before. Yeah, lockdown. it was. It was very close, and that was yeah. right coming close to the end of, before the lockdown, wasn't it? And yeah. um, it was a cracking night. I mean. Ali won, right? Well, we won't mention that, but uh, <laughs> no, he's so done. awkward. This, you know, what I mean, I know he seems like a bit of a loving, but Ali genuinely deserved it. He's, he, he smashed it, basically. There's no other word to put it, and it was a cracking night. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed myself, thoroughly enjoyed myself, right? It, it, it was brilliant, but, but I mean, you're thinking that, and you're like, brilliant, great gig. And you know who 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 knows what else is going to happen this year? <laughs> you know I mean? And then obviously a month later, no gigs, no, nothing. Yeah, uh, but you know, what? I found that quite nice. I don't know about you. The first lockdown. I thought it was nice to have a bit of a break because mm. when you're on the circuit, you've got to keep going and going and going. And you can't let up your momentum. So it was nice to to feel like you could relax and not feel like you were slacking, not feel like you were... Yeah. Everyone had to do it. And at the start, you thought, I thought, you know, what is this going to be, three months? Something like that? You so, know? And yeah. <laughs> a, bit less than, a bit less than it actually is. Um, but yeah, so first lockdown, I had a bit of fun chilling. And then I was able to do some sketches online, which I enjoyed doing. Um, some longer form stuff and then uh and, and then got back to a bit of gigging in the summer i mean we had we had a couple we did one uh outside of bowling alley which was quite nice oh crikey yes, too. i forgot about that it was in, we had a sort of spate of open air gigs and yeah. it was really windy 
<laughs> remember that? It was like a hurricane going on, and then we, we were doing a gig in a hurricane. Do you remember it was that? In Norwich, wasn't it? Yeah. And the funny thing is, well, because they, they had that gazebo, yeah. and the wind kept, <laughs> they kept blowing the gazebo down yes. on you. So you had to sort of hold the roof. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's all about blowing the roof off, but it that was. was a bit too close for comfort. It's the first time ever I performed in my jacket. Right? I remember that. <laughs> Fully like zipped up like that, just performing in like a hurricane like that. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, it was crazy, man. When you talk about those outdoor gigs, because we're desperate to do anything. I don't yeah. know about you, but I was desperate to do anything. If yeah. someone said like, yeah, go on, I've got a gig in a fire escape, I'd be like, yeah, well, how long do you want? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll just do it. But, but so I was doing, and it was cool, man. It was cool looking back as well and thinking, you know, that's quite a novelty. Well, hopefully, you know, hopefully things get back to normal. And it was cool to do a sort of gig. So I enjoyed getting back out there, doing some stuff. I don't know about you as well, but I felt less pressure when I was gigging sometimes because I felt like the circuit's not back. So all this is a bit experimental at the moment. Like it's not, it's not like you're like, well, oh, I've got a big gig coming up in two days. Yeah. Like you don't really have a big gig anymore. Like it's just, you're just taking what you can, a couple of paid bits, a couple of, uh, you know, free bits. Um, but then, yeah, in the last sort of since October, November, uh, so we're going into lockdown two and now I started doing, uh, as you know, yeah, some more shorter, shorter sketches, regular sketches on Instagram and TikTok. And, um, and yeah, that's fortunately that's, um, that's uh, done fairly well in that in those few months. Um, Your Instagram's blown up. If, if I'm going to be honest with you, it's blown up. And I think you you produce quite a bit of content. How how many videos do you reckon you produce a day? Because you seem to produce them at a very uh, a steady rate. Like yeah. how many do you produce a day? I try I try I try not to do more than one a day. But what I'll do is I'll I'll be doing my my story as well. So so when when people when people come to my page, I want them to be able to see the content, see the videos. But then also be able to click on my story, see the guy as well. Because ultimately, it's like, you know, it's like on, this is, I take a, I'm starting about eight sentences at once. I take a lot of, <laughs> I take a lot of my um, aptitudes on video from just the stage. And you know what it's like when you're on stage, you want your, your jokes need to be funny at first, for sure. Then there comes a point and the best do it when they just like you. They just, they just think you're funny, and, yeah, then, yeah. You, and then the, you know the best when you see them do hours and two hours yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. They're talking, but it's funny. That's what I want to get to with my stuff and with my following. I want them to get to enjoy a sketch, come see my page, maybe enjoy a few other sketches. Ultimately, for them to get to know me, and then we can just have a good time together. And that's sort of what's happened. But I was lucky that I, I did regular sketches. It's, I, I was aiming for six a week, try and take a day off every week. Sometimes it was seven, um, but it was always at least six a week for for uh, probably about six to eight weeks. Yeah, I find on the in- on um, the internet, like you've really got to pump out the material constantly. And I found with myself, like trying to keep up with the material and keeping the ideas flowing, was I almost got a bit of writer's block. Did you yeah. do you get this? Did you get the same? Absolutely, and also because uh, I, I I'm, you got to play to your advantages in, in comedy and in a lot, of, a lot of things in life. One of my advantages, I think I come up with a lot of ideas very quickly. Yes. Not saying they're good ideas, but <laughs> I've come up with a lot of them. So that, yeah. that suited me to do sort of very small uh, sketches. So it didn't have to be fully fleshed out, just sort of 15 seconds or whatever, but just coming up with a lot. But also what I found is I just asked people because that's the difference as well with, I think, stand-up comedy and online stuff is with stand-up comedy, you need to observe beyond what people are seeing you need to have a you need to like have a, a comment or reflection on life or whatever that people they they register but they don't realize and then you go up and say it and they're like it is like that that's exactly yeah, what yeah. it's like and that and that is how you sort of do really that, uh, that for me that's my best comedy when, when i feel like i'm doing that um but with sketches people just want like relatable stuff they just want they just want to reflect their life almost as it is or or to have characters who are very silly and 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 that's what they want so i actually found it was quite helpful and, and i will say this to anyone who's doing like you know relatable sketches or whatever you're trying to do but if you talk to people your mates and be like what what's going on in your life like what like what are you know what are you noticing and people will say stuff like you know oh every time i cough i think i've got covid and that that's all you need to go on for a sketch. So I, yeah. I think that helped me come up with more ideas. Is literally just ask my mates, "What's going on in your life? Like, have you noticed any quirks? Yeah. Anything interesting?" I think the word "relatable" is it's just that's it. It's make it relatable. Like, I know, I know, doing my stuff on TikTok that. Some of the best ones I've had, the best feedback I've had has been the stuff that's been relatable. Mm. People that can relate to it and people can go, yeah, that's me. Oh, oh I'll do that. Oh, that's us at a weekend. But I think you're right. And I think it's more and more stuff's going online now, isn't it? More and more stuff is floating online. Mm. I mean... It's really because obviously you, you. Whereas on stage you've got maybe a hundred, two hundred people, 
you know, there you've got thousands, yeah. up to millions of yeah. on on your stage as it was. Yeah. And I think you're seeing so much more of it go online nowadays. And um, but I tell you what, you, you're going to say something. Go uh, on. Yeah. Did you? Where were you on this journey? I feel like a lot of us comedians did this of seeing people go on TikTok and be like, fucking prick. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> going to touch it. I, I did that. I was like, well, I'm. I'm obviously never going to do TikTok, am I? Like, I was, I'm an artist. I was going to do... I literally, I started out going TikTok. What am I, a 14-year-old girl? Yeah. Fuck off. I'm going to start doing... Doo, 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 doo. I was like, no, I ain't doing that. And it was like, I was. I refused. I actually said to my wife, I am not doing TikTok, right? Yeah. But I wanted to write these videos. And I was looking at the different platforms to do it on, right? And I found TikTok's one, for me personally, what, what I wanted to create was the easiest. Yeah. So I thought, oh, I'll do it. I'll jump on TikTok. And now, yeah, I'm just acting like a 14-year-old girl on TikTok, basically. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I'm sure it's not the first time I'd be the last thing you said to your wife that you're not going to do and end up doing. So. Basically, yeah. <laughs> so that's one thing. But, but also, man, that platform is sick, bro, because of it, it gives everything a chance. Yes. That's the thing with Twitter um, and with Instagram before Reels. Like, you can post a brilliant photo, video, whatever, your mates will like it, other people will follow, maybe a couple couple more people will see it, and that's it. TikTok, you, you can have nothing following, you can have nothing followers. That's one to me, I had, I had 16 followers, did one video, got like 150,000 views. It gave it a chance, suddenly I had 400 followers. Yeah. That's what that platform's so good for. It, it gives if you it gives your video a chance. Totally it doesn't agree. matter what, what what following you have, it's really good. Totally agree. And I think that's why I found the transition from Instagram to TikTok different in the sense where I tried doing things on Insta and, and, and I will be honest with you, I I like Insta, but I don't get Insta if that makes sense. Mm. Um in a, in a sense where you put something out there and you can add all the hashtags and things like that to it, but nothing seems to really sort of mm. flow. TikTok, I've done a similar thing on TikTok, and exactly what you said, I think at Christmas I had something like 700 followers, something like that. A couple of months later, I was, I was in the you know, 10 to 20 thousands, and it was like, wow. And and I find the lives on TikTok, I really, I, I, I really enjoy the lives on TikTok. I've not done a live on TikTok yet, you know, but I've done that, I do them on Instagram regularly, but like, what would you do on those then? Like, what's... It's, I th I'm guessing it's similar to Instagram because I've not really seen in I'm the opposite I've not seen Instagrams yeah, yeah. See? so basically obviously you just set up the live um, and just chat into the camera but people do various different things you know I I keep it more I've got kind of a bit of a following now and then I've got kind of a group of people that message me and want to ask me when the next live when the next yeah, live yeah. And, we'll, and we'll do various things from I have obviously music requests I'll have music constantly in the background I'll have we'll talk discuss football with recently we're doing unpopular opinions oh yeah nice yeah and I'll just I'll talk, we'll bang it in the chat we'll put it, on, I'll put it up on the screen and we'll just discuss it we'll have a bit of a laugh about it people have a bit of banter about oh, yeah. it because like, I've got unpopular opinions I'm sure you have as well <laughs> go on in hey, what's your, give me an unpopular opinion <laughs> Or am I am I putting you right on the spot now? Oh, it's tough, you know. Um, well, shall, I, shall I do? Shall I do one of mine? Yeah, go on. You give me one of yours. I've got footballing ones, but I don't know how niche we we want to go. But yeah, go on. Go talk, no, well, I'll give mine. Cheesecake's horrible. Eh? Yeah, exactly. Unpopular opinion. Che I don't like cheesecake. How have you got to that? Uh, what happened to you? What, what cheesecake-related <laughs> so, trauma have you got? Cheesecake's lovely. He's going to walk out of the cabin. He? He's going to walk out. He's going to walk off. Storm off in a huff. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't like mushrooms. I know a lot of people like mushrooms, but I don't like mushrooms. But I don't think that's uh, too unpopular. Yeah, can you get um, out, please, mate? I don't want like to. You what? Get out, mate. I like mushrooms. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. This is where we draw the line. Yeah. The cheesecake and mushrooms problem. Yeah, I don't like that's, the, that's the issue. Um, I'm trying to think like. Well, so yeah, so I'd uh, say so it's all about getting the topics and things like that, you know. And, and, and the thing is, I never rated Frank Lampard when he was in charge of Chelsea the whole time he was there. Totally agree. But but then, well, yeah. But then again, it's like, well, that's I was saying that from day one. I was like, this job's too big for him, and he's he's not going to do any, any good. And, and he got to give him two hundred fifty million quid, and you know, and, and, and went backwards. But, I always said that about Frank Lampard. I think that was the. Biggest mistake Frank Lampard ever made, and I think this is what bugs me. We, we, I'm going to talk about. I was going to bring up football shortly, but we'll move straight yeah, onto it now. It, yeah. um, I well, this is one of the biggest things I found with Frank Lampard, and it's in, in British uh, pundits do this a lot. If a, a, a young British manager has half a decent season or a good season, all of a sudden they're tipped for big big jobs, right? Yep. For example, Stephen Gerrard is now tipped. Like, people are talking about him as Liverpool manager in the next couple of seasons. Me wouldn't touch him for about a couple of years, five years. Right, reason being is because he's not cut his teeth. Yeah. He's done well in Scotland. No disrespect to people in Scotland. It's like the Championship, if not the First Division. Right, to make that step up to a bigger club like that is way too soon. And I think that's what Frank Lampard done. They got was it wrapped up in all the hype and the and the kind of the fact that he'd done well at Derby. It was too much of a big step, and he got caught unstuck. 
Yeah, 100%. And you know what as well? <clears throat> An interesting one as well, especially when fans are in stadiums. I think because the carousel of managers has become so quick now, people get rid of their managers so quickly oh. and, and stuff like that. I think there's been a tendency, or at least there was a tendency for clubs to get in old sort of legends mm. to give that to, so the crowd would be more sympathetic. Yeah. So there wouldn't be as much of a toxic environment in the stadium. I think that's when you saw Ole Gunnar Solskjaer come in, you saw Frank Lampard come in, you saw Pirlo come in at Juventus. Yeah. These, these, these greats who have played for the club basically is to stop fans berating them from the day, from day one, you know what I mean? So, because for instance, like, because what, what was it Chelsea had before Lampard? Was it Sarri? And <clears throat> they were just sick and tired of him. Even though he was a clearly a decent manager. Cause yeah, he's done right. <clears throat> he finished that season winning the Europa League and and, and, and Chelsea finished third. Yeah. So it's, it's, a good, it's a good season, you know what I mean? But but they were just sick and tired of him because they didn't like his vibe, you know? Whereas yeah. Lampard comes in and it's all legend, Frank and all that stuff. And and, and, so, and then, like you said, I think so many people have, especially, I think, Managers slash ex-players have made that mistake of going into them jobs. I think they get wrapped up in the hype a bit as well. Mm. And I think that's, like that's to me, someone like Steven Gerrard should never go to Liverpool for at least five, six seasons, if not longer. I think, I think, I think they, if, if, Klopp, if Klopp goes backwards again next season, I think they'll get him in. And that's, I'm not even saying that's, a, that's a, a good thing, but I think they will. No, I agree. I agree, but I think it, they'll do it for the reasons what you said. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'll do it for those reasons. So, well, we've got to appease the fans. Stephen Gerrard's done well in Rangers. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, mean? Look, I will say he's done a good job of Rangers. I will say that though, to be fair, because because Celtic. I mean, I've, I don't know how many fucking times they've, they've, they've hired Neil Lennon. <laughs> I feel like it's the 25th time I've, I've seen him in charge. I've got him as a guest on the show in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about how he's about to take on Celtic again. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah, yeah. To replace, his, replace himself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but uh, so they're not as good as uh, they're not good managers as Rogers. But I mean, Celtic did have an absolute monopoly over that league, and, and Rangers got completely torn apart. Um, and they've done they've done decently in the Europa League. But I, I, as you say, you know, it's the Scottish league. It's so far down on the list. I mean, they, they haven't even how many teams they got even got in the league? Like twelve, something like that. It's like twelve teams, and no respect to the Scottish league itself. But I think you'd agree that it, it's a two horse race at the minute, basically. Always has been. Always has been. Yeah. Always has been. yeah. Um, so, so yeah, you don't you don't want to win something there. And like, I will give credit, like any manager, any manager who's won a won a league somewhere, I think has there's something about winning a league. Like even, I will say that even about Oli, he, he won a league with Mulder. There's something slightly different, like Lampard finishing sixth in the championship. It's it's, it's just no different no. to finishing anywhere. You know what I mean? Like you have to have some cut to, to, to finish the uh, to be a title winner yeah. the same with Pirlo at Juventus I mean Juventus has gone backwards as well yeah. and it's like he was he was manager of the under 23s for nine days and they were like well he was a great footballer <laughs> you know I mean? he looks cool chuck him in as you, as you can tell by Ali's accent he's a Man United fan yeah, yeah, and, um, yeah. I've got waiting for the home game at Wembley <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what, do you, what do you think of Solskjaer and do you think you'll be finishing where do you think we're finishing the league I should be the same uh, I, f- I think I think we'll be finishing at least third. Um, I like I'd like second, but honestly, we're so we seem so knackered at the moment. I will also caveat this: a uh, viewer, I'm a season ticket holder, right? Okay, so, <laughs> and my dad's from Sale, so I've got there's two things. Oh, there. here we go, here we go. It's, it's the, the, the compulsory sort of disclaimer on yeah, why exactly. I'm a United just, fan. Just run that on under my thing there. <laughs> season ticket holder, I'll give you my seat seat details. Um, <laughs> But he's, uh, yeah, so anyway, but uh, I, I think we're, I'm a bit philosophical about this season now. There was a point where we were in the tight race for about two weeks and I thought, well, let's, imagine this, it could be brilliant, like, yeah, you know, yeah. just out of nowhere. Um, but then City went on that ruthless streak and we just got worse and worse. Some of the football has been uh, absolutely diabolical at times and other times it's been really great. Um, I think he's the best manager since Fergie. Uh, I think yeah, that's that's, a, that's an interesting quote. Even... Yeah, I, I honestly think so. I don't, I don't think you can really, <clears throat> I mean, Mourinho had the one, one season where he won the uh, uh, Europa League and the and the and the League Cup, and then we won the, the Charity Shield as well, um, uh, the Community Cup. Or whatever. Is it, was it Van Gaal you had as well? Van you? Gaal won an FA Cup, yeah. But uh, I think Oli's done a better job than all those guys. I think we're our, our squad is in a better place to go on and win something. Mm. Um, mm. So he's done well that. I think also the football's been the best it's been. When it is good, it's been the best it's been in those since 2013. Um, Do you think that's because of the kind of the ex Ferguson kind of uh, what's the word <clears throat> influence from Solskjaer? Do you reckon he's do you reckon he's, he's taking there, that with him a bit? Yeah, there's definitely a lot, and, that, and, that, and that, there's definitely a lot of we we do this because that's the way Fergie did it. 
which isn't necessarily correct. Mm. But I mean, if you're going to model yourself off anyone, like, why not Sir Alex Ferguson? Exactly. Yeah. For me, is you know when they ask you that question of like, oh, if you could have dinner with someone uh, alive or dead or whatever, or if you could be on a, just a park bench and have a chat with, yeah. I'd love, to, I'd love to chat with uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. Totally agree. Yeah, He's I think I I iconic. I, I take a lot of when we talk about work effort with comedy, I take a lot of that from Fergie growing up. Because that team, it had superstars, but it was all about everyone working hard. Like mm. the amount of players who left United didn't do much. You sort of Tom Cleverleys, Darren Gibsons, yeah. and Andersons, and all these players that won league titles because they worked harder for him. That was the thing. It was all about doing your job and doing it well, yeah, and yeah. having that passion and always wanting to win. We got like doesn't matter if it's a friendly against some team in Japan. Like you want to win it. Oh, gotcha. I love that. Um, but yeah, so I think he takes a lot off after Fergie. Um, I, I still think you can't really say like what is his style. You know, I love talking to Arsenal fans because they are oh. just such a funny bunch. Uh, oh, they're, deluded. They're, oh. they're talking. They're talking about their team like they're second. <laughs> they, they have no idea. It's, I saw a tweet which was so good, which was like, "If this is how Arsenal fans uh, talk, may we hope they never get good again? Because imagine what they're going to be like if they actually start winning anything." I know. I do, they're the most deluded. Uh, not deluded, but I find them. They're the sort of fans where they could win five one, right? And they'd moan as like hell yeah. like for that one goal. Yeah. But, they, but then. But they're still the best thing ever. Yeah. It's like, you're not. It's you're mad. Not. It's like, look at where you are in the league and they'll say about, yeah, but the style and all that stuff. And it's like, that is great. But it's not, it's not been, Arteta's not been in a job for two months now. It's been a while. Like he's had a full transfer window. Yeah. And, you know, Ollie in his second season came finished third. So if you, if Ollie's a PE teacher and Arteta's this genius, I was having a right row before the season started. <laughs> with oh God, we've, I know we've basically discovered the fact that Ali's got a bit of beef with Arsenal. Oh God, I was having a right He's row. got lots of beef with Arsenal by the sound of it. Well, I grew up in North London, so obviously there's there's a, there's a historical <laughs> thing there. But my, but he, he was he was classic classic Arsenal fan. I was having a beef with him. We were talking about who was yeah both being unlikely, but next season as in this season. Who was more likely to win a title if that were to happen? Who's who? Which team is better placed? Yeah, yeah. But that's happened. And he was having none of it. Like Arsenal was like, we've got the best striker in the league, oh. Bama Yang, and we've got what? The, we've we're like we've got the second or maybe third best manager in the league. We're definitely we are, delusional. And I was like, how have you come up with this? <laughs> <laughs> it was like basically you get Pep, Pep's better, yeah. Klopp's decent, but I'd say Arteta's probably like pushing Klopp. For, for really, that. yeah, really, it, it's just bonkers. But um, but, but yeah, so 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 that's that, so you see your your kind of feeling towards that is my feeling towards Tottenham, yeah. right? It's the, the delusional notion of Tottenham fans, yeah. right? They they they'll always be Tottenham in my eyes. Like no, it's Tottenham. They will always be Tottenham. Now, who you have, you have Mourinho who manages you, right? Yeah, I think he's won something at every club he's been at. Yeah, right. I've just got this funny feeling it's not going to happen it at Spurs. It won't be Spurs. <laughs> it won't be Spurs. Spurs will ruin it for them, you know? <laughs> yeah, but that, that's another thing. that that's And that's the worry with Man United, just going back to Man United briefly, is because the longer you stay out of the, 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 the sunlight in terms of winning stuff, yeah. if each year makes it harder for the next year. As Liverpool fans, it took them 30 years yeah. to win it. And you think, I mean, we weren't around in the 80s, but if you think... But how dominant that team was to watch that team yearly winning stuff. Yeah. To go thirty years, it just shows how every year you lose, and it's been it's been it will be eight years since we won a title after this season, mm. and and then you're just like, well, what? Why do you think it would be the year after? Mm. You know what I mean? So with Tottenham, it's like, have you do you remember how like you won the League Cup in two thousand and seven, mate? Like, <laughs> what? Where is this? Like even with Pochettino, like you came second, you came third in that season to Leicester, and then Arsenal. Like, it, how did you manage that? Came third in a two-horse race. I was just about to say that. Yeah, the famous he came, they came third in a two-horse race it's, somehow, it's didn't mad, they? It's mad, but that is that's the nature of the club. It's like when you, and that is internationally as well. Do you remember when they got knocked out in the Champions League? I think it was round of sixteen by Juventus. They were two 0 up. Yes, I remember this. And. Juventus went through because they got a two-all draw and I forget what the thing was but that was enough for them and what was it Benucci came out and he's and he said it's in the history of this club Tottenham Hotspur that they are to not like <laughs> <laughs> even, even they know they're going to choke at some yeah. point <laughs> and it's like that's Leonardo Benucci an Italian bloke who, who's never left Italy except for a main, um, for, for a football game yeah. I'm pretty sure like, but even they they know that is what Spurs are was it um I see something on, on Sky. I think it was Gary Neville said this. Mm. Don't quote me fully, but I think it was Gary Neville said something about it was at Man United and Man United were playing Tottenham, mm. right? And it was getting in the dressing room and the gaffers just walked in 
And then he gives a big tear to what he did. And he said, look, come on, lads, it's Spurs. You know what to do. Exactly. You know, it, that's, that's the famous it's Spurs. phrase. Spurs. Don't lads, worry. Lads, lads, it's Tottenham. That's it's, what Fergie said. Yeah, lads, it's Tottenham. But that is, Basically, that's it. It's Tottenham. That's, you know? that's what they were saying. Do you know the other day when they got knocked out by uh, Dinamo Zagreb? Yeah. Even though they were 2-0 up with just half a uh, half a football to go or something. Because, you know, the Zagreb manager was in jail. Yes, I see that. <laughs> People were tweeting like, oh, he's just, he's called up with his one uh, allowed call just to say at a half time, lads, it's Tottenham. It's Tottenham, and just do it. And knock them out. <laughs> but it's true, but that is, that's the history and the legacy of those, of those sort of clubs. <laughs> So I really enjoyed that, Ali. That chat was brilliant. Now, uh, do you fancy getting involved in a little quiz? Absolutely. Right, here we go. This is my <laughs> quiz that I'm introduce introducing to this, right? It's called, How Much Is That Celebrity on Cameo? Right? Now, if you don't know what Cameo is, Cameo is a website where you can sort of pay for a celebrity to give you a recorded greeting. I'm going to give Ali the celebrity and three multiple choice answers, and he's going to tell me how much is that celebrity on Cameo. Right? Are we ready, Ali? I'm absolutely ready. Excellent. Let's do it. Right, okay. We have um, the first guest. What's first guest? What are we talking Who are you bringing about? Up? A special guest. First guest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bring him in. Pick right. him up. I haven't told you. I've got this guy standing outside waiting. That was right, uh, the real interview. Ali was a fluffer. <laughs> <laughs> got him down here. It is right, Jason the first, Donovan. <laughs> the first guy we've got is John Cleese. Right? Is he on cameo? I'm looking down by the way because I've got the paperwork down here. Two hundred and thirty-seven pound fifty, three hundred and thirty-seven pound fifty, or four hundred and thirty-seven pound yeah. fifty for John Cleese on cameo. Oh, mate, decent whack to be fair. For I suppose he's just getting a shout out. Um, it's a fair old whack for John Cleese, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, isn't it, man? He's a. Uh, I'd say so. I mean, he's old as well. To be fair to him, fair play for for getting on cameo. I, I love the way he's kind of gone. Well, he's old, and he needs the money. <laughs> I it, don't man. think John <laughs> Cleese needs the money. Mate, this <laughs> is the guy who did a tour, which was called like the Alimony Tour. Like <laughs> he's been divorced. He's lost money, man. I know this dude. Um, I'd say. Uh, well, look, I think it's quite a lot. So let's let's go with the, the lowest on 237. 237. The actual answer is £337.50 for John Cleese. I know. Imagine I'd rather have the cash. Like, what is he going to say? Like, how much <laughs> yeah, are people no, going mean... like? The thing is, as well, I feel like the people who love John Cleese, they might not be. On, they might not know what cameo is. Yeah. <laughs> like, people in their sixties and stuff. Who, uh, I, but, but, fair play. Fair yeah. play. Right. The next one we've got football related. It's a football related one because obviously you can tell we're both big football fans. Yeah. Michael Owen on cameo. Oh, mate. Right. Is Michael Owen one hundred and thirty five pounds, three hundred and thirty five pounds, or five hundred and thirty five pounds on cameo? Have you seen him? Um, is when he did that helicopter trip in Dubai. When he did the boring commentary. I've heard about this, so yeah. Good. you got to watch it, man. But I could just imagine him being like, I want to shout out your birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Happy yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, so what um, do you reckon? I'm going to go with, I'm going to do the opposite then because I got I got s snaked on that one. So I'm going to go highest, what was it, 500 and whatever that one was. Five, the actual answer for Michael Owen to get a message to you on Cameo is... One hundred and thirty-five pounds. Okay, <laughs> bargain basement. Bargain basement for Michael Owen. The cheap man. How has he got more? He's more desperate than John Cleese. Know, What's going on there? Right, we're going to do the final. We're we'll doing that. We're going to do another one for you. Paula Abdul. Paula Abdul. Wow. Paula man. Abdul. I've pulled out the hat here on cameo. Right. It's going. Is, it's a singer, isn't it? A singer. Paula yeah, Paula Abdul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is Paula Abdul? One hundred and ninety nine pounds twenty five, two hundred and ninety nine pounds twenty five, or three hundred and ninety nine pounds twenty five. I know I sound like a DFS carpet seller <laughs> when I'm doing this, but yeah, in the reverse order though, it's yeah, the opposite yeah. of the DFS sale. It was one hundred and ninety nine twenty five, but now it's three hundred and ninety nine twenty five. You missed out, you idiot. Um, I'm, well, I have no idea now, so I'm just going to go back in the middle, <laughs> 299 25 for Paula Abdul, ladies and gentlemen. Let's ring it up. Get, right. Okay, the up. answer is 
299. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. It. That's what I'm talking about. Do you know what I make? Do you know what makes me laugh the most about these? Right. Obviously, some of the prices are scandalous. It's the random 25p. What's going on there? Yeah, what's that about? It's like, what, 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 <laughs> why the random 25p? It makes absolutely no sense. I wonder if you can haggle with them. I'll give you just 229. 299. <laughs> now nah, we need that 25p. That uh, <laughs> no, was brilliant. Right. Well, do you know? What? I really, I did enjoy that. Was that a good game? Yeah, it was good. But I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh, is John Cleese getting 330? Quid and Michael <laughs> Owen, Ballon d'Or winner, Michael Owen, just getting 100 quid. I know, I know, that's ridiculous. Mad, mad. Maybe they know with Michael Owen because Liverpool fans don't like him anymore, Man United fans don't like him that much. So. Yeah. And Geordie fans probably couldn't afford it. <laughs> yeah, enough, yeah. yeah, Mike Ashley's looking at that and going, like, Nah, I'm not gonna buy, I'm not gonna nah. pay for that. Nah. nah, right, here we go. So now on to the final question. This is the question I love to ask all stand-up comedians. The reason why I like to ask this question is because quite a lot of us, I am really guilty of doing this. Of When you have a great gig, you always post it online and make it sound like you've had a wonderful gig, right? But I find some of the most funniest stories and most interesting stories are either your worst or craziest gig. So, Ali, tell us your worst or craziest gig. Cool. Right, okay, I'll give you a little... Give you a little few sprinkles, Ooh. and then I'll serve the cake, right? Ooh. So there's a couple. There's a couple other ones because you said craziest before, and I was thinking, what happened to the crazy stuff? I remember, I remember emceeing at Vauxhall Comedy Club a while ago, yeah, before COVID, and uh, it was just a, the Tuesday night there, so it wasn't it wasn't huge audience. It was just a sort of it's a sort of new material night, and um, you know them ones if you're emceeing or if you're on stage, or whatever, and you could just people talking, little chatting and stuff like that. And I was, because you're MC, you get a bit more license to address it. So I was like, I was like, what are we chatting about? And she, she sort of started talking. I was like, what? What are you, what are you talking about? Uh, like, who are you? What do you do? It's like, I'm a Samba teacher. And I was like, well, you're not at Samba class now. So like, <laughs> listen up, you know what I mean? <laughs> and she's like, she's like, it could be Samba class. I was like, if you want to be Samba class, let's do it. Get up on stage. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, play something. Play some music, and then I was like, right, you're gonna teach me how to samba. And then I just sambaed with her for like two, three minutes <laughs> just to get her to shut up. I was like, if you come samba on stage, then you promise you're gonna be quiet for the rest of the show. So she was like, of course! You know, she was like, of course I will. <laughs> so I was like, right, okay, let's do it. Do that impression samba. again, please do that impression. Of course! That was me, that's why. Of course, I will do it! <laughs> she was Welsh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I couldn't clap her. Uh, but the, uh, yeah, so, so um, that was that was a great, that's the probably the craziest stuff I think I've ever done on stage is to completely just throw out the script no comedy just literally play some music and dance with, a, <laughs> with, a, with an audience member um, probably the second worst gig I did was up the creek of the blackout right and you wow. know you know what the blackout is yeah 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 but wow well this is interesting for, for, yeah for people who don't know what blackout is it is uh, what you call a gong show you've got to try and get to uh, five minutes of your material without the audience basically booing you off they get free cards mm. in mm. Um, and uh, you get two minutes grace period to do that and it's at one of the best clubs in London up the creek yeah, um, super really club. great club and uh, and it was my sixth gig my sixth gig <sighs> idiot I, wow you know what you, I, you always get people at these gong shows who because you google don't when you start I don't know about you but I google like you know Mike's like comedy. Where can you go? And obviously the gong shows are always looking for new people because it's fucking horrible. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's easy to get on those rather than get on the, the circuit. Yeah. Um, the basic like gong shows are like bear pits. Yeah. Basically, they're, they're just bear pits. And the audience like, are there. The audience are there because they know what the night is. It's not like they're there for a quaint comedy night and people are like, oh, we're doing this fun thing today. It's like they're like, this is the night when you can be pricks and that yeah. is what we're here for. Yeah. Um. So I was. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was dying, man. But the thing is, with 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 up the creek and and, and the back, um, the blackout is, you've got a you've got the two minutes grace period, so you're gonna be on for two minutes. And I was just dying, man. And I just remember I said Google at one point, and this guy just shouts out. You know when you get cut down with a heck, we just shouts out. Why don't you Google some jokes? And then oh. everyone laughed. Biggest laugh I've got on the night. And I just when you start out, you know you have those ones because you haven't built up you haven't built up a buffer of good gigs, so you just think that was in. And I, I just went home and was like, I'm never I'm never been going to be a comedian. <laughs> I never I can't do it. I'm not funny. I've never written a good joke in my life and all that sort of stuff. That was a bad one. But the worst one, worst one, which will stick with me, is at the comedy store, their Gong Show, King Gong, right? Wow. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I've never heard about this story. Yeah, Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, King Gong, right? 
exactly the same. If you've not seen it before or gone to it, the comedy sauce is even bigger, 400, 400 seats. And they only do it once a month, and you don't get the grace period, so you just get you just get gonged off. And they're brutal, you know what it's like. Oh. They're brutal. They, they book twice the number of acts. Please they, wait, I, I, I've seen a guy. I'm not joking. I'm going to stop you for a second. I see a guy literally once walk up on stage in his flowery shirt. He run onto the stage. He jumped and turned and went hello. Three cards went up. I swear. <laughs> I have, I have seen that. that. Right? that I, have, I fully deserved just for the shirt more than anything, literally. Oh, and I was tough. like, and the geezer had travelled for miles to do this oh. gig, right? I've, I literally was like, oh my god, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's that's how brutal this night is, basically. Yeah. It's, it's 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 horrendous. And again, people are just there. People are just there to do to be mean. That's a lot. But some people are there because they've been brought whatever the figures comedy show. But the large part, they're there because they're fucking Monday, yeah. Monday night. They've had a long day of work and they want to fucking yeah. cut loose. So what happened then? So what happened? I will remember it forever because it was Halloween. Literally Halloween night, 31st of October. This must have been 2016. I wasn't a mug then. I'd, I'd heard about this show. So I waited a year to, to do it. So I, I knew that I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have nothing. So uh, it was Halloween. Some people were in fancy dress. There were four geezers who'd, who'd, who'd dressed up as the Grim Reaper and the MC talked to them and they, they'd done that because they were there to, to watch comedy deaths. That's what they wanted. So they were there for Grim Reaper. Wow. They've each got a pitcher of beer under their under their seat. Not a pint. They've each got a pitcher, a jug each, right? They're booing everyone off. And I'm, I'm last in the first half. So a decent position. You want to go in the first half, I feel like, with these sort of things. It's harder in the second half because people are more pissed. And I got on... And I'm so nervous and I was doing okay. I was doing my, my stuff. I, I, I just, best jokes at the top and then see where we get from there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I opened and it was one of those where I wasn't smashing it. I was just doing enough to get onto the next 10, 20 seconds, whatever. Yeah. That's what was happening. I was, people just were, you know, enough, there were enough people laughing that it wasn't a thing. To yeah, get me, we were just getting by. Just getting by, but that's, that's not enough in King Kong. And as I found out, and, and, I, and I was just, I was just finishing a bit. This guy in the crowd shouts out again, loud as anything, just goes, "You stole that!" And I go, "No, I didn't." He's like, "Yeah, you did. It's Sean Locke's bit." And I was like, "Fuck off! No, I didn't. It's mine." Immediately. Oh turns. no! Everyone's, no! They're no. just waiting for an excuse. And everyone turns, and I've obviously now, to, and I was just telling the crowd to fuck off now as well. <laughs> and boo, boo, like, like, proper, proper. That's the thing as well. It's not even, it wasn't even booze as in you, like, they didn't like your comedy. It was like now, they yeah. thought I was a, I was, a, 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 a joke feed, which, which is basically a big no no. Which is, a yeah. Big no no. And this is at the store. Right? Where you're trying to get in because it's one of the best clubs in the country. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it was anyway before COVID. I'm sure we'll be back, but but this and 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 everyone like proper visceral like fuck off, mate. Like you are fucking scum. Yeah. Obviously now I'm coming off and the comedians are like fucking. Who's this fucking? Yeah. Because I'm fairly new. I know, I know a couple of people, but they're like they're thinking, well, you know, he's a joke thief. He's just a joke thief, right? Like, yeah. Pretender and stuff like that. And I was lucky. I was literally off half time. Fair play to anyone who bombs at a gig, especially a gong show, especially when they're starting out and stays and watches. <laughs> Not me. I was out of there, but you're walking, because obviously it's, it's the, the other thing at the bad time as well, about just being on for half, is half time. So everyone's up and walking about, so I've got to weave in. Oh, between. that's that's worse, because where, where you all sat, right, as well, you're kind of sat kind of amongst the crowd, mm. in a way. You're kind of just to the right of the stage, yeah. aren't you? And you're kind of, so everyone can easily walk up to you. So now you've got, a, oh my God, the feeling. So oh, I can feel, I'm feeling it yeah. now, I feel like, oh no. 100%. So it's not even that you've died on your ass, embarrassing. It's like you're weaving between people and they're like, you know, off, off you fuck, mate, because you're a joke thief. And, yeah, yeah. and I was just like, and I, I always remember, I went out into Leicester Square and the song, Start Me Up, Rolling Stones, I put my headphones in, I just press shuffle, and I thought, I thought this is a banging song, but this will always be ruined for me. Because whenever I hear Start Me Up by Rolling Stones, I just think of that night. And it was a very similar one where I just went home and was just like, I'm shit at comedy, I'll never make it. Did you ever, have you ever researched a joke? So yes, I did. So I used to do a bit about my fringe, where your hair would come down, where I used to say like, I used to have a fringe as a teenager, because I didn't like, I'd be like, you have to flick it out. It's very hard for anyone to take you seriously when you flick out your fringe like that. Yeah. And so I looked up sort of Sure Not Fringe bit, and it's on it out of 10 cats he talks about Justin Bieber and he says oh Justin Bieber's like flicking his hair like that 
And that's literally all it is. And it, but it goes down very well in ART. It's a funny bit. And I, of the night, night, I never did it again. Like, yeah, no. Of course not. And I can fully understand why you didn't. It was my best fully bit. Fully understand. The best bit. But obviously that's why. Because it was, and you know, I think as well, maybe part of it is because I was watching 8 out of 10 yeah. cats when I was when I was younger, yeah. you know, and that just went into my head years down the line. I was yeah. like, you know, no, I was it, like, oh, I remember when I had a fringe, maybe I could do something with my hand or something like that. And No, I, I think, do you know what, I, I do believe in subconscious, what's the word, um, subconscious material in a sense where you may have heard something and it might have stick in your head and you might create something that you think is unique, but there's actually something kicking on around that. Yeah. That, do you know what, that's great. And do you know what, I can actually... I can feel your pain at that gong. I can feel it, because I've done the gong, I know what it's like, and I can feel your pain at that gong, mate. I will say to anyone who's watching this as well. Go for it, yeah. The point is, that was fucking shit, right? Awful. <laughs> but you go back, I was like, I'm doing this again in a year. That's the first thing I said as well. Excellent. After I'd had all the doubt, the anxiety and all that, you'll never make it where, but I was like, I'm doing this again in a year. Went there a year later and beat it. And that is, but that is what? That is it. That, that is, all these people who are successful, they all flop. At some point, you start off failing, and then you just get better. And do you know what? So that's so that's what, go and do it. That's a great message there to anyone who, who's thinking of starting a comedy or doing a comedy at the minute. If you do flop and you do go shite, you know, and it doesn't work out for you, do try. You know, don't just give up. Go back and do it again. You know, and if all else fails, just nick Sean Locke's material. You know. <laughs> That's what you do. Why do you have to do me like that, Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yeah. no, do you don't steal material, but if you're going to steal something, make it a good job. No, honestly, <laughs> that, but Ali's, Ali's right, and it's very serious in the sense where do, you know, do, um, don't ever give up. Go back. If you do bomb it, bomb it a gong, use it as almost like fuel to the fire and go, right, I'm, I've got a target now. My target's now to, to beat that gong, if you know what I'm saying? Mm, that makes sense. And that's the good thing about comedy as well. Any, I mean, it's almost to, to a masochistic point, but any bad experience you have can always be material <laughs> oh god yeah so so use these life experiences you know yeah. and, and make comedy out of it totally and I think do you know what we're gonna that is a great note to finish on that's a great note honestly Ali you've been an outstanding guest on the first ever episode my pleasure thank you ever so much for coming mate it's been an absolute blind have you enjoyed yourself I've, I've really enjoyed myself thank you it's the Wicked. most fun I've had in a taxi <laughs> <laughs> so. without the meter being on exactly oh is it yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah that's how you finish these things isn't it yeah and that'll be 73 quid yeah that'll be right. bang there we go that's <laughs> yeah. 100 pound please Ali lovely stuff thank you very much <laughs> yeah I see why you do this but genuinely Trevor thank you very much for having me it's very exciting to be the first guest and uh, you know, I look forward to watching this series in the future. So thank you very much. Fantastic. Now, thanks everyone for watching the first ever. So I really hope you like it. And uh, I'm going to leave it on this. Thank you uh, once again. Thanks ever so much. Stay safe and be lucky, guys. Thanks a lot.